Cricket Life Stories with me Neil Kagram. Today we're joined by Will Linton. Will, you're going to show us some ground fielding tips for all. Take it away. So yeah, the most important thing that we need to think about is what is the aim, what's the objective of fielding the ball on the ground. Obviously it's handle the ball well so they can't get an extra run, but then it's to get the ball back onto the, the either the keeper's end or the bowler's end as efficiently and accurately as possible. And that all starts with our legs and the types of positions we get into. So the first thing we need to think about is even before the ball is hit, what are we doing? And one of my big bugbears in cricket is walking in. And I know culturally it's what we do in order to be in time with the bowler. But what we find is when we walk in, it slows us down that we're not necessarily in a particularly athletic position. I'm much more of a fan, especially if you're fielding in the circle, and think about how we almost incorporate like a little split step from tennis. So rather than me walking back and forth every time the bowler delivers, but just having a little bit of downtime and being ready, right? As the bowler approaches, now I'm gonna get ready, and then right as that ball enters the batting area, boom, now I'm in a, an athletic position. And I would argue that that's much easier for me to get into a place where I can now react left, right, forwards, backwards, jump in the air, whatever I need to, than if I'm walking in and hoping that I'll get there. Walking in might work for some, but I found that getting this little split step is a much better strategy for us to be in an athletic fielding position. So what we're gonna work on now is technique for fielding the ball and throwing it to the stumps when we're inside the circle. Now, hopefully, if we're all on the same page, if the ball was hit right at me, I could just feel it and come into my regular fielding position. Or if I'm throwing already in my line, I can stay in this position. What I want to focus on is what happens if I need to throw to my non-throwing side. I'm a right-handed thrower, so if the ball is hit at me and I now need to change direction, how can I do that as quickly as possible? Because we're looking here to save fractions of seconds and it might take too long for me to come up, set my feet, turn all the way around and get lined up. So I need to think about how quickly can I get rid of the ball. So the first variation we're going to do is just dropping a knee. And when this ball comes in, all I'm going to do is drop my knee and then throw from here. And it's that simple. It's, I want to be clear, it's not a long barrier. I'm fielding this ball here and as it comes in, I drop the knee and then throw. Okay, so the next progression from throwing inside the circle is to move a little bit further back and stay on our feet the whole time. And we're going to introduce now a half pivot. So as opposed to dropping my knee and throwing, I'm gonna half turn, but the goal is I'm not gonna take all the time to spin all the way around. I'm just gonna get my feet set, chest onto the target, and get rid of it as quick as I can. It's gonna feel a little bit, almost like a sidearm sling, but again, it's about keeping my elbow and shoulder in line together, so I protect this line. So even though I'm here, this is still a strong throwing position as opposed to dropping my elbow down. As long as I can maintain this posture between my shoulders and my arm, we're gonna be good to go. So now the biggest benefit from dropping the knee or using that half pivot is speed. But sometimes we lack a little bit of power. So the further we get away from the stumps, the closer we get to the edge of the circle, we need to incorporate our feet a little bit more. And so this last one is called kind of the inside pivot where we're gonna pivot as quick as we can to get our feet and shoulders lined up. But again, the emphasis is still speed. I can't be taking many steps. I need to think about how quickly I can get the ball and then go one, two into the throwing position. Two steps or less in order to get rid of this ball. So when throwing from the boundary, the objective remains the same as from the inner circle. We need to get the ball as quickly as we can from the ground back to either the keeper or the bowler. The difference is we now need to throw the ball further. So how do we throw it further? Well, we use our legs, but how should we use our legs? How do we do that as efficiently as possible? There are three ways that we can do this. First one, the ball tipped right at me and I need to hit throw it straight away. I'm gonna use what I would call a drive step. Maybe we used to think about it as a crow hop, but I prefer a drive step because I find with a crow hop, we jump a little bit too much in the air and I want our energy going towards the target. So my drive step would be, I'm gonna attack the ball, field off of that front foot, and then drive this back leg towards the target to get myself into that strong throwing position. The next one, would be if it was to my non-throwing side. So for me as a right-handed thrower, that's my left hand. If I was to attack this ball here and then implement a drive step, I'm gonna end up misaligned to the target. So I need to kind of use that inside pivot footwork again as quick as I can, shuffle my feet into a strong throwing position. 
this isn't going to be as strong as a drive step but it's quick and in some ways quick is as good as anything especially when it comes to cricket and then the final one would be on a ball to my arm side so if I'm running along the boundary I'm close to the boundary I now need to throw the ball back in what I'm going to find is if I pick it off of my front leg it might actually be better if my back leg is my front leg in this position so as I'm coming in to attack the ball I feel that here as opposed to fielding it here and what this now means is I can include a step behind so I can pick it up off my right leg left leg and step behind and get lined up this will be the most powerful of the three but I am taking an extra step that shuffle here means that there's more time on the throw so I really only want to implement that when I have to which is fielding the ball off of my right hand side so now we're going to work on just a little bit of progression on throwing on the run that the end goal is to make sure that we're comfortable throwing on the run and it's such an important skill for cricket to be able to pick the ball up one-handed and get rid of it and ideally hit the stumps on a direct hit but how often do we practice it i mean even myself as a throwing coach i talk an awful lot about strong throwing positions yet most of our runouts come from here not to say that this doesn't matter and this isn't important but we do need to spend some time giving our players confidence and the skills critically in order to execute those running throws so we're going to start right at the beginning and then work all the way up to some hopefully pretty athletic pretty great throws so we're going to start with just getting comfortable balancing on one leg so i'm a right-handed thrower so that means it's going to be my right foot and all i'm going to do is i'm going to open up my foot ever so slightly and i'm going to balance on one leg and then from here i'm going to try and throw and for me, this is really important that I balance. Two things are gonna happen. One, I'm obviously developing the skill of throwing on one leg, but I'm also developing that connection between my top and my bottom halves. I'm having to subconsciously brace my core in order to balance. I don't wanna just stand on one leg and throw. I wanna take my time. So I'm gonna get balanced, and then from here, throw. And if I can, I'm gonna try and keep that front leg off of the ground. And then once I've made a couple, now I'm going to experiment a little bit and see if actually can I get a little bit low. As I drop my torso, my arm goes, but I also need this leg out to balance me. So I'm not dropping my arm here, my whole body is tilting to the side. So this would be, be over the top. Now I'm going to come to the side. And now I might even go underneath, submarine style. So again, we come here and we go martial making sure my back leg is plugged into the ground, making sure my arm action is good. Now from here, the next step of Marshall is to go walking throws. And the benefit for throwing on the run is we're now just increasing that intensity just a little bit. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to walk towards the cone I just threw off, but every time my back foot hits the ground, I'm gonna make a throw. So it's like the wrong foot throws. It is the wrong foot throws, but it's in the context of building up to throwing on the run. So I'm gonna start back here, walk in, and every time my back foot hits the ground, I'm gonna make a throw. Right, so, now we need to add in some running. And we're gonna go forwards, backwards, and forwards. You'd be surprised at how challenging it is to throw on the run while moving backwards and forwards. We often find that we run forwards and the first thing players want to do is set their feet and get back to this strong throwing position which is great, but that's not what we're working on. We're working on throwing off this back foot. So we're just trying to encourage them to keep their feet moving and throw on the run. And then do the same while they're going backwards. And what we find is when they throw backwards, the accuracy often goes completely out the window, but that's fine. The purpose of the drill is just to get comfortable being athletic and moving. So again, we run forwards and throw, and then run backwards and throw. Then for our final progression, we now need this cone set up in the middle. So we now have a target and we're going to go between our side cones here so it gets a little bit more game-like, a little bit more like we're trying to throw on the run, get those batsmen out between the stumps as they're trying to take an extra one or dare I see it, even two off of them. So, we're going to start here on this side cone. I'm going to run towards my other side cone. But every time I get to the middle cone, 
is going to be when I throw. The trick here is obviously this is my arm side. So I can just throw on the run and keep on moving. When I'm coming this way, I've got a choice. I can either open up and throw across my body here, but that's not a strong way to throw. Much better for me to actually spin, pirouette almost like a ballerina and throw. So there we go, throwing on the run. Starting from the most basic principle of standing on one leg, building all the way up to throwing across your body and even adding a little spin to finish. Okay, so one thing that's sometimes lacking is just not preparing the body to throw. We just kind of come out to the cricket field, do a few stretches and then start throwing and then we're good to go. For me, it's really important that we prepare the body to throw as opposed to uh, throwing to prepare. Like really important that we get a good warm up in. So I've got four pre-throwing stretches that I recommend all of our throwers always do before any throwing session, whether that's practice or a game. And I'm gonna take you through them real quick. So the first one is a reverse lunge with an overhead reach. It's exactly what it says on the tin. You're gonna start with your feet hip width apart. We're gonna step backwards and then we look to the sky. And then we repeat and we do the other side. And what's really important with this one is it is a reverse lunge. We go backwards. And the reason being is because we're all cricketers and, it's, and I want us to be a little less crickety for this. So if I'm to step backwards, you're gonna notice I'm not that far off a decent throwing position. If I was just to turn my feet and get here, I'm in a pretty good throwing position. And so what that ha happens as I step back is my head gets behind my belly button and now I'm ready to go. If I was to step forwards, what tends to happen is my head gets in front of my belly button and now I'm in not such a great throwing position. Now I can't rotate my hips, my head is too far forwards and it feels just a little bit too much like playing off a shot off the front foot. And getting your head over your front foot is great if you're playing that shot off the front foot, not what we want when we're throwing. So that's why we start with that reverse lunge just to clue up and remind our body where we want our head to be in relation to the, our center. Next one is called X open ups. So we start with our feet now wider than our shoulders and the end position is that we drive our hips forwards and our hands up. So what we wanna do is make sure our hips go back and then come forwards and we're driving that position so our hands open up. And what we will typically do is four half squats and then go into a full squat for the last four. So that would be a set of eight for our X open ups. Next we have door knobs. And we go hands out to the side and if you're doing this along with me, all I want you to do is imagine that you've got two enormous door knobs in your hands. And we're gonna try and open these doors up by twisting them forwards and then backwards, forwards and backwards. And what's really important is we're paying attention to what's going on here and here. So not only are we activating our rotator cuff and we're paying attention to how our shoulder's moving, but we're also checking in to see, well, how does my shoulder feel? Does it feel good? Does it feel not so good? Do I need to do some extra work? And once we've gone forwards and backwards a couple of times, we can then go opposite. So we go one forwards and one backwards, just to really prime our shoulder. And then our fourth and final one is called wood chops. And so what we do is we get our feet much wider than our shoulders. And I, let's imagine that we've got like a tree in front of us. And in our hands, we have an ax. We'll rock forwards, rock backwards, and then we're gonna swing that ax forwards and try and chop that tree down. But it's important what's coming next. It's throwing, it's a powerful move. So it's not gonna do me any good if I just sit here and just gently tap the tree with my ax. I need to chop it down, I need to use my legs. So when I come through, I've actually got that back leg coming through with some force and power. Rock forwards, rock backwards, and chop through so that my back leg is really involved. And we'll go one more for a set of three. So those are our pre-throwing stretches. Reverse lunge with an overhead reach, X open ups, door knobs, and wood chops. Now, of course, you can add other things in. You can have a little game. You can do some extra stretches, but I highly recommend you do those four to prime your body for what comes next, which is throwing with intent, throwing with athleticism, and throwing with purpose. All right, so the first thing that 
I really want to make sure we cover is we talk about grip and how we hold the ball when we throw. Hold the ball across the seams, make the ball go straight, and we think about how do we do this. And for me as a coach, whenever I'm working with someone, I'm really key on making sure this might be the one thing I'm going to key on every time. The next thing that we need to make sure that we think about is that the actual position of the arm. So first off, where should the elbow be? A nice place to think about is just being in a good athletic punching position. So if I was going to throw a punch and get ready here, we'll notice that my elbow is probably about shoulder height. It's certainly not above my shoulder and it's certainly not tucked down here. Where am I going to position this ball? We used to, and I used to be guilty of this as well, think about, well, I want to point the ball away from my target so I can throw. But that's not really how our arm works. You could just hold your hand up like this and we put the ball in. You can feel how comfortable that feels in this neutral position. And if I twist my wrist too far this way, you can start to feel a little bit of strain. If I twist my wrist too far this way, you can feel the strain run down your shoulder. So it's an indication that this neutral wrist position is probably a good place for us to go with. So that's where I would start with, with our arm. Get the elbow in a comfortable position as if you're throwing a punch and having that ball and wrist in a nice neutral position. So this front arm helps me with direction and helps me be on, on target but also it helps me actually rotate and turn with the throw. So to simply turn my thumb up, you're gonna notice that already my shoulder opens up. Is this the worst thing in the world? No, it's perfectly possible to throw here and it's perfectly possible to throw here. But if my shoulder's starting to open up, it now means that maybe I'm gonna open up this way and now I can't throw as effectively. So for me, one of the things I look for is can we keep that thumb down? If an athlete is having a lot of difficulty being accurate and the ball is drifting to their arm side, typically it means this front arm isn't doing its job. So I'm going to really want to make sure we have that thumb down to keep that shoulder closed when we throw. The final piece, need to make sure that we're connected to the ground. I need to be, make sure that my hips can come through so I can then whip my arm and deliver that strong throw towards the target. So for me, it's really important that we train the legs and we train our feet, not just to be strong, to be athletic. So I'm going to take you through three of my core throwing drills for teaching cricketers how to have a good arm action and good arm angle. And first off, so we understand what we mean by a good arm action, like it's not over the top. We should understand that everybody is a sidearm thrower. Like everyone, regardless of what position they play, they're a sidearm thrower. If they're a true sidearm, it just means that their chest is upright, their torso is vertical. If they're over the top, they tilt a little bit more and if they throw underneath, they tilt this way. So our goal is to try and make sure that the elbow matches the plane of rotation of the shoulders when we throw. So how do we get that? Well, first off, we start with making sure we're aware of that, that punching position, making sure that our elbow is locked in at shoulder height. Now what we have is a progression of throws where we're actually gonna throw off the back leg. So this would be my normal throwing position. For these drills, I'm gonna have us thrown off of this back leg. And the reason we do it is it helps me get in a strong throwing position. When my back foot's forward and my arm is cocked and up ready to go, it's almost now impossible for my arm to drop out of that good slot. So when my hips fire and they rotate, I'm gonna put myself in a great position to now throw and teach my arm and my body and critically my mind to remember what that good feeling throw looks like. So, First throw, and we just call this a Marshall drill. And the reason we call it a Marshall drill is a pitching coach in the States called Mike Marshall, who unfortunately recently passed away, came up with and promoted these wrong foot throws. So we've called the Marshall for years, but even more so it's important that we recognize the work that he did to helping myself and other throwing coaches help throwers around the world. So Marshall one, real simple. I'm gonna be chest onto the target and I'm taking a step with my back foot. Just a small step, not a big step, but I'm just gonna lock myself in, back foot towards the target. And from here, I'm gonna set that ball up, I'm gonna turn and then throw. Throughout the throw, I'm not gonna move my feet. And what's really important is I wanna keep this ball up. I don't wanna minimize anything that could go wrong with my hand dropping below my waist. So a nice cue for me to think about is that this whole cricket field is flooded with water and I'm gonna try and keep the ball out of the water, which is up to my neck. So again, here we go. Foot forwards, ball up, out of the water, and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn and throw. It's really important if my feet are gonna stay roughly in place. I'm not, I can, they can twist a little bit, but I'm not gonna take another step with my front foot. I'm gonna make sure it's just my back foot that's in front. So I'm gonna get that ball up, up at water height. I'm gonna turn and throw. 
Next thing to be mindful of is, if you remember this front arm, really important that we keep it closed during the throw. So for this drill, I want to imagine that there's a pane of glass right through me. And when I throw, I'm gonna smash that pane of glass here before I throw. I'm not gonna come here and just tickle the pane of glass, but I'm gonna physically smash and then go. So here's how it looks. Ball up, smash, and go. And then the final teaching point is this thumb. I wanna make sure after release that thumb turns over. We'll talk about why in just a second. But my end point after I've got rid of the ball is for my thumb to turn over and for this big part of my thumb to be just against the hip right here. So again, last one, ball up. Imagine there's water at my neck height. Smash the glass and throw. And then I finish with that thumb just on that front hip. Okay, so this next progression is just called Marshall 2, and it's a progression from where we started with Marshall, and we're gonna be stepping into that Marshall throw. So you might be thinking now, well, why are we spending so much time throwing off of this back foot? How many times do we make throws like this in cricket? And it's for two reasons. Number one is we do need to be comfortable having a strong and stable back leg. Like when we get to throwing on the run, we need to be able to throw off that back leg. But also, we're not necessarily working on a cricket throw right now. We're just working on good physical literacy when it comes to throwing. And being in a position where our hands and our feet are working together and taking out any confusion that can come from the timing of your front foot or your hips not working right is why we do this piece. Because my feet and my hands can work as one. The other thing that we found is for players that can't quite figure out how to use their hips, when we set them up in Marshall or what we're about to come to Marshall 2, is getting into this position really helps them get that separation between hips and shoulders and enables them to drive those hips into their throw. So it's one of the best ways for me to think about how do I teach using the hips and legs without ever having to mention it, which for me is coaching goal. So here we go for Marshall 2. So we set up initially with our back foot forwards. All we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our feet together and we're gonna take a step in and throw. Notice, because we're taking a step in his throw, I'm not gonna set the ball up as high. I'm gonna allow my hand a little bit of time to take advantage of the rhythm that comes with my step. So let's think about that water level. For Marshall one, when we were here, we had the water up to our neck. Marshall two, I'm gonna take the water down to my chest. Same principle, I don't want that ball to get wet, but now I can just allow that ball to get a little bit lower as opposed to keeping it up nice and high. So here we go. So away from the cones and a step and throw. Again, same thing. I'm really trying to make sure that I close off that front side and I'm making sure that my finish point is with that thumb over that back hip. Final one. Okay, so last progression here of our Marshall or wrong foot throws, we're going to be walking into it. So we started with Marshall where our back foot was fixed. In Marshall 2, we stepped in, and now with wrong foot, we're gonna walk all the way through. So now because we have even more, more time, and we can get more rhythm into the throw, we can now allow the arm to do whatever it feels most natural. That can be a really long arm circle, but for me, I think probably a shorter arm circle is still preferential for cricket. So I'm gonna stick with a shorter arm circle, but you can go with pretty much whatever you feel comfortable with. But again, my goal is just to make sure that after two or three steps, I get back into this position where my back foot is down and then I throw. So, a couple steps back and all we do is we walk through at a nice pace, back foot comes down and throw. And I'm making sure that finish position is still the same as Marshall 1 and 2. I still wanna make sure that my thumb is turned over and I promise I'll cover in a minute why that's so important. But again, we just walk through, back foot comes down, and we throw. Making sure I close off that front arm as soon as that back foot comes down. Last one here. One thing I didn't really cover is the importance of this thumb turning over. 
Now, for me, it's all about what happens after we throw. So we just think about this. If you're gonna throw the ball as hard as you can, and let's say you can throw the ball 90 miles an hour, that means that at release, your hand is moving 90 miles an hour, and now it has to go from 90 to zero by the time you finish. Loads of things that happen naturally in our body are gonna help that in terms of our back leg working, our back working, but critically we also need to make sure that our arm is working well. What should happen is after we throw is we pronate, meaning our hand turns over and that helps decelerate our arm naturally. If your hand supinates and it comes underneath, then what happens is the bones in your elbow, the tendons collide, and now we're in a position where we're just gonna get additional inflammation. And for anyone that has had sore elbows from playing cricket, I find typically it happens an awful lot in spin bowls for people throwing here and letting that ball out underneath and not allowing that hand to turn over naturally. Now I'm not expecting you to have to do this in a game and think, right, feel the ball, get up to a position and don't forget to pronate. But this environment where we're working on throwing and we're just worrying about having good technique, it's a great time for us to think about what does good look like? What does good feel like? How can we teach it so we can hopefully reinforce it when we get out on the field when it matters? So now that we've worked off the back foot, we're gonna go into a sequence of drills that's just gonna help us be a little bit more athletic when it comes to our throwing. So for me, a couple things matter. Number one, that we are athletic, meaning we're gonna to have to move, we're gonna to have to have good athletic posture. Number two, we need to throw hard, because if we don't throw hard, then what are we training? Are we just training throwing softly and hoping it gets there? We need to make sure we elicit that sort of behavior that we want from the games to happen in the practice environment. So we've got to throw hard. And then number three, we need to throw to a target. Even if we don't hit the target every single time, it's about making sure that we're training our mind, our eyes, and critically our body to go to the stumps and not just a space that you know, can be defined later. So those three things in mind, we're gonna work on three throwing drills right now. Number one is just real simple, just a little bit of a step back. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step back onto that back leg before I throw. And I'm just trying to think about how I can be as strong as powerful into the ground before I throw. So I'm gonna get into my athletic position, I'm gonna step back and then throw. I'm not jumping back, I'm not having a big leg kick like I would do in baseball, just a step back and throw. And what's really important is that I really think about how I can get that back foot into the ground, here. That I'm not just leaning back, but I'm being athletic. That I'm almost imagining there's maybe like a tent peg behind me that I'm trying to drive into the ground. And the other thing that you might have started to notice is I'm making sure that my back leg comes through after I throw to help with that deceleration. I don't wanna just sit here and throw and keep my back leg locked into the ground because then I'm losing power. And I'm also not helping my arms slow down, which is just a recipe for disaster. So one more time, just step back and throw. So we're sticking with these principles of athleticism and now we're just adding a little bit of movement forwards and backwards. And for anyone who is an aficionado or at least a fan of American football, we call these quarterback drills or quarterback throws. So we're gonna shuffle back and then shuffle forwards and throw. And the goal is just to try and maintain that athletic posture throughout. Can we have our feet moving forwards and backwards before we make a throw? So first things first, we get set, then we shuffle back then we shuffle forwards and then we throw. Most important thing for me is I maintain that posture throughout the shuffle. Again, thinking about what type of arm circle, how long do I want my arm to be? Probably not long in cricket, so a nice short compact movement is gonna help me be a more efficient thrower. So this next one, call them spin throws, because that's exactly what we do. We're gonna face with our back to the target and then spin as quickly as we can in order to throw. We do this for two reasons. One, in a cricket match, there's gonna be times where you're gonna pick up a ball and have to throw it without being able to look at the target. Maybe it's behind you, maybe it's to the side, whatever it is, 
we want to give you a chance and practice to have that experience of not being able to set perfectly and line to the target, but spin really quick and find it. The other thing though, is it comes back to those hips and shoulders working together. And we find that the faster we spin, the more efficient our arm gets. The faster I spin, the better my hips and my arms do what they're supposed to without me having to actually say, oh, do this with your arm, do this with your hand. So there's another great way for you to think about how you can improve your throwing technique even without me even being there. So here we go. Make sure I get in a good athletic throwing position. And here we go. And all I'm doing is making sure before my first move is that I get this athletic posture. It'd be really easy for me just to stand here and then turn and go. But I'm gonna lose all the good stuff that's going on here by setting myself and getting in that athletic ready position. So I wanna make sure, boom, I get here and then I turn and go as fast as I can. And that's also a key point is it's not about spinning and just, well, taking my time and going, spinning quick, seeing how quick my hands and my feet 